Yes. So question two, explain three reasons why most threats to an organization's information system are con uh, contributed by insiders. Insiders are people who are working within the organization. They could be the employees uh, that are inside the, that are able to access this uh, data in, in the information system. So the question says, uh, why is it that uh, most of this information, uh, the, 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 the threats are from within? The first one could be access and familiarity. Remember, these are employees, these are contractors, these are partners. So they have legitimate access. They are always given access to various parts of, of the organization information system. So it is them that sometimes use this, misuse this access privilege to extract this information or that, and they manipulate this, and they, now they compromise the legitimacy of this information, and they leak it maybe uh, outside. So one is access and familiarity. Then the second one is motivation and intent. So some of the employees or some of the insiders in these organizations might be having some motivations. For example, they could be uh, having some uh, appetite for financial gain or revenge, or maybe they are dis dissatisfied with the organization, or they have just their personal ideologies. So their intention or their motivation sometimes also lead to uh, the information in this organization being at a, a larger threat. And also we have lack of a, a external detection. So sometimes insider threats can be harder to detect. Why? Because insiders are already within the organization's trusted network. So to eradicate this, there might be need to have external detection. So this, this can help uh, to to narrow down or to minimize the risk of information being leaked from within the organization. Then question, second part of the question says, state four ways of pre uh, preparing against insider threats. So how do we prepare against such threats that we've talked about? One is to implement strong access control. Sometimes we call it PLP. So this principle gives uh, these um, um, employees or gives these uh, insiders least privilege. They limit these employees' access rights. So they can only access uh, data or systems that are necessarily within their roles. So this reduces the potential damage. Why? Because each and every person at each level can only access information within uh, which is relevant to their role in this, in this organization. The second thing is to monitor the use behavior. So the, you, you can employ uh, user entry behavior analysts. So these people can, the analysts can sometimes analyze how people use these systems. The activities, they can identify unusual patterns and so this will help them to detect these unusual patterns and uh, anomalies, things that are not all normalities out of place and then this can help to detect this uh, this threat they also need security awareness training so these employees should be trained they should be trained on comprehensive security and now this would emphasize the training should also emphasize on, on data protection securing passwords so that they are aware of what they are doing and their roles and how they are supposed to handle uh, this uh, the, the, these systems and even data that are, are at their disposal. And also you could develop and enforce insider threat policies. You can create clear policies, well-defined policies that uh, articulate how data is being handled. It articulates access control, information sharing, and acceptable use of, of technology within the organization so that each and every employee do not breach these policies. Then question B says, explain three techniques for eliciting user requirement during information system development. So the first one is interviews. So how do you know the user requirement when you are developing an information system? This is what we call elicitation of user. How do you how do you get information about what the user needs are in, 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 
or information system so that you don't end up developing a system that will be rejected by the user or which could end up being unfriendly to the users that are intended to use it so first of all you can use the interviews and surveys you can conduct one-on-one -on -one or group interview where you gather you just discuss and you get feedback from them you can also use surveys where you distribute questionnaires to a larger group and then this group will be a representative of the of the larger set we can use workshops and focus groups so you can organize workshops workshops is where you organize interactive uh, key stakeholders and users those people who uh, will, will be using the systems who will be investing into these systems so from these workshops you can have a structured discussion and you brainstorm and then you see what uh, the system or the requirements are you can also have what we call focus groups you can assemble small groups that represent the entire bigger population that would use these systems and therefore this focus group should participate you challenge them with their needs and their desired features they are able to give the feedback then we have what we call prototyping and mockups you can create a preliminary version of the system or what we call a prototype a representation of what the system will look like and you then you demonstrate these key functionalities so the users can interact with the prototype and then they give you the feedback so this one gives them what we call the visual the visualize and refine the requirements then question c says david Mundi is the owner of a home of uh, appliances shop at the Duala branch so details of items sold by him during the month of march 2023 were given so we have the items there we have the brands and then we have the sales price so the 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 the, uh, the brand uh, we have lg brand we have samsung and we also have Bluetooth. so required is explain the steps required to prepare pivot table with the above information to show the sales of each brand using a spreadsheet application such as uh, LibreOffice CSE. use proper sale reference in your explanation so first of all you insert pivot table you go to insert at the in the spreadsheet there at the top there is that excel ribbon you see insert then you find an icon written pivot tables so this will open a create table a dialog box so then you will choose the data source in this case our data source is from a1 to c9 so that is our range so we we start from sorry a2 for color tv to c9 without the, the the price there then so that is our, our data our data our data source our, the range of our then we choose whether you want to place the pivot table you can either place it inside the same sheet that you are working on or you could decide to place it in a new sheet in, in that in that case you you can go to new uh, new you just press new tab or add you add a, a sheet there and then now you can now design your pivot table so you list so in our case we have this column columns so we will have uh, item brand and sales and now in these columns we will, we will have values and even filters there so now we will drag in this case we, we we want to have samsung lg or wind pool so we will be dragging any that we want we can start by samsung lg then wind pool after after the drop uh, the drop down arrows have appeared for for this column headers and then now you can customize your pivot table so you can just right click on the element of the pivot table and adjust the setting for example do you want to sum them do you want to average do you want to count so you can use any 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 uh, any function there to summarize your your work so when you refresh your pivot table you will find the you will find the changes there in your data set you can also apply format and styles at the end but you could leave uh, 
okay your answer at number four customize your pivot table 